This is a little Wings 3D modeling project. It's going to demonstrate some techniques that I found useful, though I should warn you we're going to backtrack a bit in order to demonstrate these techniques. So we're going to make a, a simple object and then we're going to sort of unmake it and make it again just to show you a difference between this technique. Well, I'll get on with it and you'll see. Right click and create a cube, select the entire object, select faces and inset holding down the control key and go for 80% looking at that value in the top left hand corner. Press space to deselect the faces, select corner mode, select A corner, press I for identical, right click and bevel, hold the control key down again and go for 0.9. Now select one of the faces, press I for identical, right click and intrude and take it in um, somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6, that will do, something like that. don't need to be too specific about these things. Press space to deselect, select edge, select one of these outside edges, press I for identical, press L for loop, press L for loop again in case the loops didn't make it around the first time, and then right click and circularize. That's going to make all those faces square. Left quick click to set that, and then right click to loop cut. Find the unselected object part and hide it using that little eye, press space to deselect those, select one of those square faces, bring in the hidden part, press I for identical, right click, rotate, normal, hold the shift key down and take it round 45 degrees, look at that number at the top left that appeared there, then select the entire object, right click and weld. Okay, right, at this point select the entire object and do Sabian subdivision. So we're going to come back to this stage again, probably. Um, or somewhere in this region. Now my aim here right, is just to get some of these sections selected. I want that bit selected and that bit. So to do that, I select one of these lines, use I for identical, so it selects some in the corresponding places around the shape, press G and especially a couple of times until it's definitely traversed all the way around these loops, then select face, right click and intrude. Okay, so I've intruded those 0.1 and then if I select that edge and that edge and go L for loop, I for identical, L, I, L, I, just to make sure it's all been done, then I can right click and bevel, bevel that down slightly. And then when I select the entire object and smooth twice, the result of putting that little bevel in means you get a nice sharp corner in the smooth, which I think is an appealing effect. I'll just use Control and Alt and Z to take us back to the point before we put the bevel in. Right don't include the bevel, smooth the object twice and you'll observe that these become quite rounded. So that's the action of the bevel. It's also possible if you have a loop and loop, loop, a loop and identical get those selected again, right click and select hardness and select hard. You'll see that the color is now changed to orange. You select the entire object and smooth now you get a very sharp edge on there. However Getting hold of that edge again afterwards is tricky. So if I select that and do what I did before, loop and identical, because the objects become so much more complex and because there's lots of little lines in there, uh, if I try doing this trick, it's possible that I might get these outer edges, but I probably will also get some little lines that are within this object. So that the final beveling act, which you might want to do here, well, we might look okay at this point. It's going to be time consuming because there's so many lines it's got to pick out. You can see it's thinking about it. And then I discover I can't bevel very far and, and there's other lines that have got accidentally selected. So for that reason, putting a bevel on at this, this stage is better than using hardness, I think, for the final effect. However, all right, I'm just going to go back now, as I said, to an earlier stage. The stage when I've got this selected or one before because it's not always clear how you get that bit selected so it's one of these lines like that and then it's identical I key and then G key press it a couple of times so it's all the way around then select that at this point what I'm going to do is right click and then right click on material and create a new material I give it a name just give it a color and then in the outliner down here I can see I've got that ready and the reason I want to do that is in the outliner for example I can right click on that and use select to select that thing that's been given the material and if we go to select an inverse, and I have these other faces, I'm going to right click and inset them a bit. I can only inset that far, that's the maximum. However, if I want to make those uh, areas smaller, I can right click and scale uniform and shrink them down a bit more. So I could shrink them down to say 50% of what they were. And if I right click and then left click on material, 
I can also assign those the same material color. The reason for doing this is I can now use the option to select all that material and then intrude again, but I've got some extra features. Now, uh, because of the geometry, you might see some spikes forming. Uh, these extra holes have created a few problems here and there. Smoothing might take them down, but I can't intrude as far as I did last time without risking some problems. So I'll intrude a bit and then go, hmm, hang on a minute, and press space to deselect. I want to select these again to give them a hard edge. So I'll select a few and then press L for loop and discover, because I've put these extra holes in, I can no longer use the loop to get round the outside. Which means, if I smooth it now, I get the problem, I'll just smooth it a couple of times to show you, that these outer edges have got quite rounded. And I mean, that's, that's an effect, but it might not be the effect I wanted. What if I wanted a sharper edge on those to make them more defined? Well, Control Z, uh, Control Alt Z, go back and select this edge tool here. I can do a crafty thing. I think I'll go what back one more step as well. There you go. Right, back to here. So what I do is I use my edge tool and put an edge in along the line of that loop and then use the G key to extend that and press I and G and that will take it around this inner face where I'd uh, intruded it. Now if I select the face tool and right click and then I can extrude and just extrude it a very small amount and the effect of this is it's quite similar in the end to beveling because I've put two lines very close together on this surface when I select the entire object and smooth twice so I'll just oops, hit that, select again smooth it, okay you get a similar effect to as if I'd put the the beveled edge on. It's left that, you see how straight that edge has become there so I've got a nice flat edge here and I've got these dimples in the surface which I thought was a pleasing effect. I'm going to go for one more level of smooth for my final model. So th the aim of that really was to show you how you can get around uh, not being able to loop around the edges of your object because you've changed the geometry as I had there and uh, and then just and then just using a, a little bit of an extrusion on an edge if you can get on an edge as I showed you to to put a sharper edge in so now I've got this nice flat edge and then the it dishes in towards the center uh, it's all going to be one material this so I might as well set it now so I'll just use uh, face mode for material and then right click left click on material because I'm not defining a new material I can select the material I've chosen for that press space to deselect and that is my final model which I can now export from here as as uh, as OBJ format and then uh, if I want to bring it into Bryce no problem if I want to bring it into Octane then I'd use uh, UV Mapper Classic to give it a very basic UV map so I could use some of the nice uh, uh, picture textures available in Octane so there you go that's the end of the video hope you found that useful and that you'll be able to use these techniques or make this sort of shape in Wings 3D for your own rendering projects.